First up is Satish Bitarpur to talk about the market. Satish, hi, afternoon. The tail end of the year has been uh, very upbeat for us so far. So what's your call? We have just about two more trading sessions to go. Do you think higher highs for this market is attainable now? Uh, good afternoon, Sonia. Uh, well, it's always uh, tricky to call the market for the last two days of the year, but uh, given that, uh, you know, uh, fund flows are very strong from uh, the U.S., the U.S. economy is doing well, uh, generally had uh, positive news from China, uh, and things uh, around the world are smooth at this point, um, you know, I would say that uh, we would end up more positive than, uh, more in the positive territory uh, than have any kind of uh, negative uh, uh, sell-off. So that's my uh, view at this point for the next two days. Uh, obviously, uh, you know, uh, going into New Year, we, we have a whole host of issues that we can uh, talk about. But for the next two days, as you said, uh, things should be generally positive. Satish, if you track this stock and the news that just broke on it, you have any perspective to add? Because these claims have come up repeatedly in July, most recently, and they've acted as a bit of an overhang. But nonetheless, the management didn't seem to concern. Uh, I, I do agree with management that these are uh, not really tenable claims uh, from what we've looked at. Uh, these, uh, these claims come up often, and uh, they've not been able to... Uh, uh, the, the government or NT, uh, NTTVA has not been able to convincingly get uh, resolution on this and uh, they've con uh, consistently lost in the court. So um, I don't believe that uh, this amount uh, it will be due uh, from CIPLA or any of the others. Um, it will be, if, if at all there is, it will be a much lower amount than this. So I don't think this is something that uh, investors in CIPLA or potential investors in CIPLA should worry about at this point. You know, uh, this is, uh, CIPLA is a good stock and uh, other uh, issues uh, um, such as generics and, um, you know, uh, are more important for this uh, than to worry about this particular issue call on Reliance Power. I mean, that stock has done really well today and there have been a lot of uh, news on that, uh, you know, Rosa getting commissioned three months in ahead of schedule. Uh, for someone who has, who owns a stock, what is the fundamental view now that you have on this one? Um, I think it's a little too early to own this stock. Um, you know, that, uh, because I, it's it's just one uh, 300 megawatt uh, power plant that's come come up. Um, but given the valuation, uh, it's it's a little too premature to uh, start saying that uh, you know RPL is off to the races. We need uh, you know the bulk of the 3,000 megawatts uh, will come in in 2012. Um, and so until that point, uh, you know, uh, there's not much news in this stock. So uh, I, I, I'm glad the stock's up a little bit. I mean, I think there's some cheer for uh, IPO investors in this at this point, but uh, really uh, uh, nothing much else coming out of it. So, um, you know, you talked about the two stocks uh, earlier on, Suzlon and RPL, both uh, reacting well. Uh, any day I would buy Suzlon over RPL at this point, because there's something happening at Sue's Lawn fundamentally much closer rather than RPL, which will be another two years before real uh, earnings and revenue come in. Satish, what's your call for uh, going into 2010? I mean, there are a couple of factors that the market is watching closely now, be it the earnings picture, be it, uh, you know, what comes out of the budget. Then there are those rate fears as well. Uh, what, what's your sense on, you know, how 2010 will start off, at least in the early part of it, and which is that one sector that you're now uh, betting big on going into 2010? Well, I mean, uh, when we look at 2010, and I look at 2010, I look at it from uh, uh, two halves. I mean, I think the first half, uh, I believe, will be quite rocky um, because, um, you know, we, while, while fund flows are positive, while U.S., um, you know, markets will be generally helpful, um, and uh, we should also see some uh, decent earnings in other emerging markets. There are certain India-specific issues, um, where first one being, um, you know, earnings, um, where investors are very sanguine about first quarter earnings. I mean, they're, the, the concerns about earnings um, are generally uh, underplayed in the Indian market. 
And so, and, and as we see the market moving up with very little concern about earnings, a small uh, hit, hit somewhere could drag the market down uh, substantially. So that's a concern. And then the second concern for me is the bank earnings. I don't believe bank earnings in the first quarter or, or the next upcoming quarter um, uh, results will be particularly good, given the fact that loan growth's not been good, um, and also uh, funding costs are high, and mark-to-market losses on the bonds will be there. So uh, bank earnings be, being weak could uh, bring the market down a little bit. Mm. Um, so that's uh, some bit of a concern for me in the first, uh, um, you know, first quarter earnings that's coming up. And, but in the second half, I think we'll have a very nice Goldilocks type scenario where inflation will be low, credit growth will be strong, and uh, um, you know, uh, earnings will be very strong too. Uh, so um, I think I'm I'm kind of worried about the first half, but I will use the weakness in the first half of the year, calendar year, to position myself for a very strong second half of 2000. So that's that's the trade that I'm uh, looking at going into 20. 2010 at this point. The sectors that I'm uh, going to bet on, like I said, um, w- uh, will be banking um, in the second half of the year, infrastructure uh, again. So th- uh, those will be my two strong bets going mm-hmm. into um, you know second half of next year. Satish, Jindal Steel and Pa, it's been a big wealth creator for 2009, riding on the power story, now riding on the back of the steel story. With this bit of unlocking, is this a stock worth buying? Um, well, to, to some extent, yes, it is. Uh, but the uh, bulk of the easy money, uh, so to speak, has been made in the stock. Um, yeah, if they can, you know, I'm, I'm sure they will be able to raise the money uh, for with the IPO coming up. Uh, and I think there will be some amount of uh, upward move during that phase. But for the real earnings from power, like you said, it's 2013. Uh, and that's a long gestation uh, period for us to own the stock until 2013. So I would, uh, you know, um, ride it out for a bit until the IPO, and then uh, and then just um, switch into something else at that point. So it's a uh, it's a kind of a trading stock, uh, and then wait until 2012 or so, and then put, pick it up again. But that's too long a horizon for us to even talk about. But that's the idea I have on behind Jindal Steel and Power. Mm. Could you track the great offshore story? Because it's seen a tremendous up move last week. You saw it go from about 430 levels to 570. Uh, acceptance ratio was a lot stronger than most people accepted. Stocks corrected about 8 odd percent now. And now there's just that one big question on whether there'll be a second open offer from the Bharti stable. If you do track this story and you've seen this big correction, how would one play this stock if you're a shareholder and you've not tendered in the first offer? Well, I mean, if I'm not tendered in the first offer, I would just hold on to it at this point. I mean, because, uh, you know, you had the correction a bit. Um, and I think uh, if you're really a long-term holder of this, um, you know, uh, the whole oil services um, uh, fundamentals will turn as the oil prices go up. And Great Offshore will uh, will do well in, in that. And also, uh, you'll have a, uh, a stable, hopefully, uh, management in Bharti, um, you know, supporting them uh, through that period. And uh, there will always be a talk about uh, Bharti uh, making another open offer. So there will be positive overhang on the stock. Fundamentals are good. Valuations are not particularly uh, uh, stretched at this point. So if I have not tended, I just hold on to my uh, stock and then, uh, you know, uh, ride it up from here.